Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We're joined today by our doctor, Dr. Kemi Ezewane. She is the founder of Proactive Healthy Women, an online organization set up to help women with vaccines and every other thing to make life easier for the women in Nigeria. Today, we're going to be talking about living healthy in the Nigerian economy, or rather staying healthy in the Nigerian economy. And I'm joined by my special guest. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Kemi. Thank you for having me, Olive. It's a delight to have you. And I'm very excited about the work that you're doing. You know, we're going to be talking about that shortly but our topic today is staying healthy in the Nigerian economy something that lots of people say is almost unachievable because the living a healthy lifestyle is quite expensive do you agree do you disagree I agree okay completely, great. Totally. thank you very much for <laughs> agreeing so what is the hope of the average Nigerian to be able to get at least quality affordable health care what is the hope for the average Nigerian how can we circumvent the extreme expenses Okay, so first and foremost, I think that it's very important for everyone to jump on the wagon of health insurance. Now, some people think that, oh, because they work for themselves, they cannot have health insurance, or a lot of people wait and depend on the companies that they work. But right now, a lot of these um, health insurance companies are setting up programs and packages to help the average Nigerian walk into their, you know, their office and set up set up some, for, some sort of arrangement whereby they can pay a, a particular amount of money and have access to free health care for all the hospitals under their HMO. Interesting. So, yeah, it's possible to actually, and I think that, you know, having health insurance just gives you access to at least the basic, we're not talking about, you know, um, maybe anything complicated, but I think at least the basic health care that anyone could get, treating malaria, typhoid, hypertension, diabetes, and just generally the basic diseases that you have. Okay, um, Dr. Kemi, from your perspective, how would you raise the, the rate, I beg your pardon, the Nigerian health sector? Because we had a minister who said that, you know, it wasn't a problem. I would come back to the reason why doctors are leaving. Seeing as you're a doctor yourself, maybe be able to prefer... And I'm still here. <laughs> yes, exactly. Be able to prefer an answer to why we're having a large exodus of, or a mass exodus of our medical doctors to the United States, Canada, and other countries. But how would you rate the health sector in Nigeria as a doctor? Okay, so first of all, WHO has rated us as 187 out of 189 countries. So I think that pretty much explains, you know, where we are in the world. But personally, I think that there's still, we have a long way to go. You still have, and I always tell people that living in Lagos or living in Abuja or living in Port Harcourt does not really depict what the average Nigerian faces. We have people in the north. We have people in villages that don't have access to health care. A lot of the doctors don't want to even practice outside of these three major cities. I, I saw a statement made by the Minister of Health where he said there are 4,500 spaces for 400 doctors that want to intern. But he said something. He said, make sure you're not applying to Lagos or Abuja. You know, So that's the major challenge that we are having, the fact that a lot of the common, the average Nigerian, most of them don't have access to healthcare. But I think that we still have a long way to go. I think that what, where WHO rated us actually just depicts where we are as a nation. And that's not really sector. a good rank. And so so not, far, we're just like not, yes. above two countries. It's, it's actually very deplorable. Um, I work in a very good hospital. And even with that, I know the challenges we face, trying to get patients to pay for their medication, pay for their investigations. A lot of them don't come back because they cannot afford, they cannot afford just running basic in, in investigations. So, which was why I said earlier that it would be really good if we could all jump on the bandwagon of health insurance and just pay that token. It may take a lot. And the, the argument a lot of people would prefer is, oh, God will heal me. That's the average Nigerian. Oh, you know, but you never know when a medical emergency could pop up and then you would have to and for some other people just the way you insure your car in a whole year nothing may happen you may not need to rely on the insurance for anything but just in case you know just having that backup plan and then you have something to fall back on i think that's just like explaining savings so you're having a exactly. backup plan in life exactly. it's not like you're praying to be broke but exactly. you know on the days when it happens exactly and then i think very importantly for me uh, which is why I set up Active Healthy Woman to ensure that people are equipped with enough health information to stay healthy. What I would say is try and do 
your best to make sure that you don't even have to go to the hospital. So a lot of people have this attitude. They come to the hospital and they're like, doctor, tell me why I'm feeling this or tell me why I'm going through this. You tell them and then they're like, okay, just give me drugs for it. And then they go back to their lifestyle. They go back to taking a lot of alcohol. They go back to smoking. They go back to having unprotected sexual intercourse. And so because of that, you know, it makes it very difficult. So I tell people, live a healthy lifestyle. Make sure you practice, try and inculcate it, drinking water. And these things are just, they are, they are, they are very simple, you know, very, very simple. Live a healthy lifestyle, drink a lot of water, eat healthy, take fruits and vegetables. When you take fruits and vegetables, it, it helps in boosting your immunity. When you sleep enough, rest enough, exercise, you know, don't live a sedentary lifestyle. So we jump from our AC homes to, our AC, to the elevator and to the car, and you don't get to walk around. You sit in your office like a couch potato and stay there all through, you know, so it's, it makes it, so you see, so I, had a, I had a patient that was, that was 30, I met him yesterday, and he had been hypertensive for three years. And when he came in, his, hyper, his um, blood pressure was reading 160, 80. And so I told him, I said, you're a young man. You know, you have your life ahead of you. Why are you, you, a stroke, you could have it. There are so many complications that come with having your blood pressure elevated at that level. So I tell people, if you know you have an ailment, take your drugs, you know, go back, have reg regular me um, medical checkups so that you avoid even dealing with the complications of your illness. Speaking about taking drugs, Dr. Kemi, what's your take on self-medication? It's a thing. People feel certain symptoms. Oh, my joints are aching me. I think I have malaria. And then they go over the counter, purchase malaria medication and treat themselves. And sometimes, you know, the, the symptoms go away. But what are your thoughts on self-medication? Why should we self-medicate or not self-medicate? And what, what are the implications? Okay, so I think that, personally, I think that the agencies involved with regulation of drugs, they really have a lot of work to do because you have fake drugs being sold and there's no regulation, there's no control, you know. So you would be, if, if you go outside the country, for example, you cannot buy antibiotics without a doctor's prescription. You know, I've had to pay through my nose to have my kids tested just to get you know, just a prescription so I could get antibiotics. Even though I knew what was wrong, I knew what to take, you know, what he needed to take. So I think that self-medication is wrong, you know. For, for pain, yes, you could go over the counter, get paracetamol, you could go over the counter, get painkillers. But then, when you're talking about an infection, you know what happens with an infection is that that infection is caused by a bacteria. The bacteria is sensitive to all sorts of antibiotics. I had a woman come into my clinic and I sent her for a, 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 an MCS, that microscopy culture and sensitivity. And when her result came back, she was her, the bacteria in her was resistant to all the antibiotics listed on the screen. The only one it was, it was sensitive to was a very expensive IV drug. So I told her, I said, right now, we can't even give you any oral drug because you've taken, so I asked her, she said, oh, every month she treats typhoid. And I'm like, how do you do that? So if she takes, you know, a particular drug this month, she will take another one and take another one. All the, she, so she had pretty much run through the spectrum of all the various first generation, second generation, third generation cephalosporins. So, you know, it was it's for, for that kind of woman, we had to admit her because there was nothing we could do. We couldn't send her home. And it wasn't even, in my, so I tell people, when you take antibiotics, when you're treating typhoid, you know, the day you would really need this, the bacteria may be in your body, may be resistant. So... For what I would say is for malaria, a lot of people know the symptoms of malaria. Yes, you can treat for malaria because we live in a malaria endemic region. Everybody knows there are mosquitoes. And then we're even in the rainy season right now. So you have a lot of people coming down with malaria. So yes, you can treat malaria maybe once in three months or once in six months. And even at that, it's taking anti-malaria just like a prophylaxis kind of thing. So you can do that. But for, for serious infections, please go to the hospital. Let them do a test and tell you which antibiotic is suited for you or which antibiotic is most sensitive to whatever health condition that you're having. So it's definitely a no-no to self-medication. If there's anything wrong, please make sure you see a doctor, especially if you're dealing with a child. But then let's talk about malaria. You know, I've heard people say, oh, I'm AA. We're very prone to malaria. And they treat malaria every two, two weeks because they tell you that if they don't treat it, they will fall sick. I know someone like that. Every two weeks? Yes, because they fall sick every month. Wow. So in a bid to prevent themselves from falling sick, 
they always treat malaria like every two weeks. So what happens, so you know, these are the challenges we've had with malaria resistance. I don't know if you've heard of, you know, we started with chloroquine and we've come through so chemical, we've come through so many malaria drugs and right now we are in the ACTs and even right now there are studies showing right now that drugs are resistant to, sorry, malaria parasite is getting resistant to the ACTs and right now they are trying to develop even more powerful malaria drugs. So I would, for me, I would advise that you go, because a lot of the times I have had a woman sit and tell me, oh, I know it's malaria I have. I said, how do you know? She said, it's the way I'm feeling in my body. I said, okay, let's run a test. And so we did and it came back as no malaria parasite seen. You know, so I told her, I said, you probably are just tired. I'm not going to give you any malaria drug. Just go home and rest and come back next week if you still feel the same way. And she came back, rest. I gave her two days off work to go, just go home and rest. She came back feeling a lot better. So a lot of the time, the symptoms we feel and we attribute to malaria. It's probably just it's Lagos probably stress. It's probably just fatigue, Lagos stress, extra stress. You know, so yes, treating malaria once in three months, like I said, is ideal because we live in a malaria endemic environment but two weeks a month okay dr kemi before we let you go let's find out what is it that makes doctors keep running out of nigeria but you have refused to run your back here and you're running the no, proactive you can't say, you can't say. <laughs> don't be too sure hey <laughs> trouble so why are our doctors running away the thing is you see with medicine you have to you're dealing with human life so you have to keep studying i had someone that told me how she got a job and it was an experiment and you know she just she just experimented and she learned her mistakes you see the problem with being it when you when you experiment with a human life you may lose that life that person anybody that comes to you just know that that person has friends a wife a husband you know a mother a father siblings friends people that love them so you cannot afford to experiment and so because of that you have to keep studying you have to keep improving your knowledge you have to keep updating you're, inform you're updating your knowledge base pretty much. And so you don't, just, you don't just sit and say, oh, yes, I've graduated. I'm a medical doctor. The thing is when you leave medical school, you're at the bottom rung of the ladder. So you have to go into residency training. And I think the challenge that a lot of my colleagues have and are running, we don't have enough. You have a lot of people that write the exams and they don't get placements. So they write the exam. The exam expires after five years. And for five years, they are not able to get any place. And so they now look for other options outside the country. So, so it's not money? And then, of course, money. Okay. I just <laughs> wanted to be sure. Of course, money. In this part of the world, doctors are not compensated for, you know, we put our lives at risk. We don't have hazard allowance. We, don't, we, we have a poor welfare package. And so a lot of, and outside the country, doctors are very much appreciated financially. You know, which is what, so you have a lot of doctors that can't even afford the health care. I had a doctor that told me he was very ill and he couldn't even afford to do a CT scan. You know, so it's, that is a challenge that we face right now. So a lot of them are leaving. A lot of us are mm, leaving. <laughs> Dr. Kemi has said it. Let's just see what happens in the next few months. But thank you so much for joining us and for sharing all these tips with us. We have been speaking with Dr. Kemi Ezewane, the founder of Proactive Healthy Woman, an online community that helps with screenings and, com com um, what's the word, conducting major investigations for women, you know, it's a women-focused body. And she's come to talk, talk to us about staying healthy in the Nigerian economy. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.